In Riga, 40 people are taking an oath of allegiance to Latvia and becoming citizens of a European Union country. But most would not call themselves immigrants. They're part of the country's large community of ethnic Russians, including those who came here during the Soviet era and their Latvian-born descendants. When Latvia regained independence in 1991, Soviet-era migrants, roughly a quarter of the population, were designated non-citizens. The policy was intended to reclaim control of Latvian culture and institutions after five decades of Soviet rule. To earn the right to vote and hold public office, they would have to master the Latvian language and go through a naturalization process. In Riga's Moskovas neighborhood, or Little Moscow, Decades of Russian and Soviet influence are still visible from Orthodox churches to Stalinist architecture. It's home to many ethnic Russians like Maria Tukina, who was born in Latvia and became a citizen more than 10 years ago. It wasn't difficult for me to ask for citizenship because I don't have such a strong feeling of pride. The leadership of Latvia at that time was responsible for how they designed the naturalization process. But I love this country, regardless of the integration policy, regardless of the obligation to learn Latvian. But others, like Maria's husband Rems, feel that applying for citizenship in their own country is an unfair demand. Rems has called Latvia his home since the 1980s. I'm not a citizen of Latvia, I'm a resident of Latvia. I have a purple passport for non-citizens with which I can travel across any border. But I haven't learned Latvian because it's imposed on us. I don't think it should be imposed. If you need it, you learn it. When you're told all the time that you won't be able to work if you don't speak Latvian, I don't think that's right. Today, about 13% of Latvia's population, or about 300,000 people, remain non-citizens. Another 10 to 12% are ethnic Russians with Latvian citizenship. Some non-citizens, like Rems, conduct business in the Russian language and feel no need to change their status. But other Latvians warn that the citizenship issue leaves a large segment of society feeling disenfranchised. The fact that Latvia did not recognize all residents as citizens was a tragic mistake. Today there is a significant number of people who were born here, who have lived their entire lives here, who were paying their taxes here, and don't have political rights. Boris Tsilovich says there's heightened public attention on Latvia's Russian community because of the crisis in Ukraine, where Moscow has intervened on the pretext of protecting the Russian-speaking minority. The Ukrainian tragedy has polarized Latvian society and significantly undermines the efforts of our party, which is the only party that from its very beginning is built on good relations between groups. The conflict itself, as well as the information war surrounding the conflict, seriously undermines our efforts. Iveta Kajoka, a political analyst, agrees that fears of Russian influence have deepened the fault lines in Latvian society. The parties uh, who represent uh, Russians, predominantly represent Russian speakers, are still perceived as disloyal by Latvian political elite, or uh, even if uh, they wouldn't say disloyal, at least suspicious. For example, uh, there are links between Harmony Center and Putin's party uh, in terms of an agreement. The crisis in Ukraine has prompted Latvian officials to try to prevent an information war on their own soil. In April, Latvia's National Electronic Mass Media Council suspended all broadcasts of a Russian state channel, Rossiya RTR, for reporting in a way that, quote, justified military aggression in Ukraine. We wanted to send a clear political signal that such propaganda in favor of war should not take place today in 21st century Europe. We were especially worried by Russian statements that Russia can expand to any place where a single Russian lives. This signal was meant for Russia, but also for the people who are watching this TV station. But even as Russian media set off alarm bells for Latvian leaders, those officials have put policies in place to bridge ethnic divisions at home. At the National Integration Center, students attend free Latvian lessons to help them on their path toward citizenship. The classes include recent immigrants as well as long-term non-citizens who have yet to learn Latvian. And some Latvian leaders are seeking to increase the representation of Russians in national politics. 
Riga Mayor Nils Ushakovs, an ethnic Russian and the leader of the Harmony Center, recently announced he'll run for prime minister in October. A large proportion of our voters are Russian speakers. Quite a few of our voters are ethnic Latins. So at the present moment, we are the only party that represents both uh, groups um, in, our, in our society, both linguistic groups, I would say, Russian speakers and ethnic Latins. For Russian speakers like Maria and Rams, the country's ethnic divisions, and even the issue of citizenship, have little impact on daily life. I don't have any problems. Of course, I hear people ask, how can you Russians live there? You're discriminated against all the time. But I don't know. I don't feel any oppression from Latvians. Rems says many other Russian speakers in Latvia are focused on the country where they live, not on their ethnic roots. There is no way back from the European Union for Latvia, back to some union with Russia. The people who live here, both ethnic Russians and Latvians, would be against it. They've tasted the European life already. This is my country. I was born here. I want to live here. I want to do what I can so that life becomes better here. For Maria and Rems, the good life means living in a united country that's steadily working to overcome the ethnic lines that divide it.